there's no way we could prepare for what's going to happen because we really don't know what is going to happen. I worry about when arthritis is going to set in, about the heart attacks, whether I'm going to put her to bed and she's going to have a heart attack in the night. Mark Okines and Kerry Button are not talking about their grandmother. They're talking about their four-year-old daughter, Hayley. Hayley is one of only 40 children in the world diagnosed with a rare aging disease, Hutchinson Guilford progeria. It's open morning at Haley's local school. Haley is meeting her new teacher and classmates for the first time. When term starts three months from now, she will enter a new phase of her life. Who is it? Stacy. Stacy. Stacy's got black hair. All oh, right. That's okay. Why I've got black hair. What colour mouth is she like? I want purple. Purple. Do you want a happy smiley one? Um, no, a sad one. Isn't Stacy very happy then? Yes, yeah, she is happy, but I just want her to be there. You certainly like blue, don't you? <laughs> In many ways, Haley is just like her new friends. But physically, she is aging about eight times faster than they are. She's been without hair for half her life, and recently began complaining of joint pains. By the time her friends start secondary school, Haley's body will be equivalent to that of a 90-year-old. Oh, that's for Stacey. Oh, that's lovely. Who's that? Um, Stacey, I just told you. <laughs> you weren't listening, were you, Mum? Haley comes from Bexhill on Sea in Sussex. She lives with her parents, Mark and Kerry, and newborn baby brother, Lewis. She has a half sister, Stacy. Mark and Kerry had realised that something was wrong soon after Haley was born. She was about four months old, I think, and I was changing her, and she looked like she had sort of two little lumps either side of her belly button. So I kept mentioning to the doctors that she wasn't putting the weight on properly and these little lumps and they kept saying that I was being overprotective, it was my first child, didn't know what I was talking about basically, I think. And it was only when she was a year old that they thought, well, I, yeah, she's not gaining weight properly and that they'd start looking into it. The doctor at um, the hospital said she may have progeria and they gave us a bit of paper with progeria written on it and that's all we had. So first thing when we got home, we went round to our friend's house and he's, who had a computer and was on the internet and we looked up progeria and that's the first time we'd ever heard about it. Progeria is what we call a premature ageing disease and this is a disease which mimics or caricatures many aspects of the normal ageing process that's going on in you and me. We put the words premature aging in quotes because there are some aspects of aging that the children do get. Um, they have aged, wrinkled looking skin, um, they do have hair loss, they have heart problems, but there are other things that are normally associated with aging that they don't have, such as cataracts or Alzheimer's. Their brains remain completely intact. They're very, in fact, very bright, sweet little children. Can I wake you up in the middle of the night to come and help me? Yeah. Can I? Oh, that's good. You can wake me up any middle of the night if you like. Can I? How you want to. Okay. He's a little piggy, isn't he? He's a little piggy porker. He is a little piggy porker. <laughs> Haley's brother Lewis is just hours old, but Mark and Kerry are certain that he doesn't share Haley's condition. Progeria is thought to be caused by a random genetic mutation. What you see when you are seeing patients with progeria is in all probability the result of a gene that has just gone bad by accident in one or other of the parents. Any patient who has progeria is very unlikely to live to reproduce so the bad gene is not passed down. The average age that the children live to is 13. 
children have died as early as I believe six or seven. Others have, have lived till their late teens, but it's really more likely that they will live till early adolescence. Children with progeria normally die of heart failure or strokes. So to help Haley stay healthy, she has a daily regime of medicines. Many of these could be found in the bathroom cabinet of the average pensioner. Vitamin E, she has four meals a day in milk, which is for the heart. They say it's good for the heart. Cod liver oil for the joints. Um, fluoride she has for her teeth, because a lot of their teeth rot. And the build up milks, because it's like 300 calories in a bottle. So it builds up their weight. There's your milk. There you go. Every week, Haley has to visit the local hospital. She enjoys the hydrotherapy sessions, which help ease her joints. But there is no cure for progeria. This kind of basic supportive treatment is all that's available. There's no cure for old age, so there's not a cure for progeria. So we have to try and treat the symptoms as best we can. Every joint in the body, right from her fingers down to her toes, stretching, contracting, just to get all the muscles moving, keeping everything mobile as you can. Ready? Ready. Count to ten, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good girl. Whoa. Right. Go on, Shirley. In the children's ward, Haley attends regular checkups. <laughs> well, who is it? You tell me. Just can't listen to my voice. Oh, is it Auntie Janie? Yeah. Oh, hello, Auntie Janie. Oh, she wants to talk to you. Hello. Haley, please. Um, her growth's not quite as good this time. I don't know if you. Haley's doctor is concerned about her growth rate, which has been slowing. No, is it still? It's uh. A more thorough checkup, I suppose, than one would give most children who might have just one problem that you're looking at. But obviously, with Haley's condition, there are lots of different aspects to it. There's not anything that one can do to actually reverse the situation. We just monitor it and give things like hydrotherapy to try and keep her joints as loose as possible. Come on, Chick. Right. Nice to see you. Thank you. Say goodbye to Dr. Bry. Bye bye. Bye bye. Turn around and say goodbye, sit. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Hey, do you want to show from your passport? Do you know how old you were when that was taken? No. Haley and Mark are getting ready for a trip to Florida, <laughs> where they'll meet other families affected by progeria. Two. It's an event organised by the Sunshine Foundation, an American charity. <laughs> It was only little. When we first found out that she was diagnosed with progeria, we was, uh, uh, through the internet, we found the Sunshine Foundation. It's one of the first sites we found on the internet. And then it all sort of yeah, went off from there. We've never looked back since. There. Most important thing about the reunions is going out and meeting the other parents and finding out how they're getting on, how they're coping with it. Just generally speaking to people that know how we're feeling. Well, let's, <laughs> let's fill up now. OK, we'll have to sort some up putting daddies, won't we? That's it. So, good night, baby. We'll see you in America. No, no, we'll see you in, tomorrow in America. That's it. And you. OK. Hey, Lee. Time to get out. Oh, hello. Right. Oh. Hello. Where are we going today? Look. Yeah. <laughs> With a new baby to care for, Haley's mother will have to stay at home. But the reunion in Florida is too important for Haley to miss, so she'll go with her dad. Yes, you can. Saying goodbye. Do we never kiss them? Kiss. 
Thank you. Take good care. See that, mate? Go off to you, ma'am. Right. Come on in, mate. Let's get in. 32 families are heading to America, all linked by this rare disease. It's an extraordinary pilgrimage, one that Haley has made twice already in her short life. Four-year-old Haley Okines is in Florida for the annual progeria reunion. 32 children are arriving from across the world out of just 40 known cases of this rare aging disease. It was sunny all week. I thought the airplane touched down at the wrong country. I really can't believe it, but we're having a good time all the same. It's not dampening anything down so far. The first stop is the Outback Steakhouse. Three quarters of the world's known progeria cases are in the room. The reunion has been running for 20 years, and this extraordinary gathering is a good story for the local press. One sufferer with an even rarer form of the disease has been to every reunion. Greg is 32, outliving all of his progeria friends. There's a new family from Denmark. I think there's a new family from Korea. Um, I haven't really spoken to them yet, but I'll be getting round to them before the end of the week. I know a lot of progeria kids live to go to Sunshine Reunion. And it's nice for them just to walk in and just see 30 odd kids with no hair or with bandanas on that all look sort of pretty much the same. And I know Hayley really looks forward to going. Hayley, look, chicken and chips. Okay? As well as a party for the children to enjoy, the parents value the opportunity to share their experiences of new treatments. We're always talking about what treatments they're on, if there's any different treatments about, um, maybe we can try them at home or find out from the doctors at home whether there's anything new we can have a go at. Look out. <laughs> I've noticed a couple of kids this year have stiffened up quite a lot on their joints, which is one thing we're keeping an eye on with Hayley because she's been complaining about hip pains and uh, her knees as well, especially after she's been running about a lot. We're talking about different things we can put on them, like treatments for their arthritis and stuff like that. Next, a fun park for disadvantaged children, where even the local bikers lend a hand by offering rides. The reunion is an opportunity for specialists to see how the progeria syndrome is developing in Haley and her friends. The syndrome has um, features that lead to these children all looking very similar. The children don't have much body fat. They have more prominent foreheads and more receding jawline. And this leads to them looking very similar to each other, especially when they are advanced in age. But the course of progeria can be quite different from child to child. I look at some of the other kids, like a similar age to her, and I think that she looks pretty good. She does look good. She does look very healthy. She is a very healthy child. So at the moment, she's only got sort of trouble with her joints. My heart's in pretty good shape. All right, good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. You ready? All right. Groovy. I like that. That's happy. With better weather the next day, the families head out early to the hotel pool. But the happy scene is overshadowed by tragic news. We got in the pool quite early this morning, about 8 o'clock, I think. About 10 o'clock we went in to uh, get a drink. Somebody told us that Greg had been taken in the hospital. About a couple of minutes later, someone else came up and told us that he, he died. And... Uh, it was a bit of a shock, but uh, uh, I don't know what to say, really. It was a bit of a shock, but it was expected. Every year we come to a reunion and we're not expecting to see him. 
and uh, there was talk about calling off the reunion. There was some people saying, I think everybody ought to go home. And I talked to a couple of the other families and they said, uh, no, I don't think Greg would have wanted that, especially looking at what he did yesterday up at the Sunshine Village and some of the photos I saw of him. I don't think Greg would have wanted that to happen. The last day before you go home, you say goodbye to everybody, you don't know who's going to be there the next year. It happens every year. Um, I don't know. It's, 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 you just got to do it, you know? It's just something that you know is going to happen. You just don't know who it's going to be. You don't know what kid it's going to be. You don't know how old they're going to be. All the families have to cope with the knowledge that progeria is terminal. But all agree that they must carry on with a reunion and hide their shock for the sake of their children. First thing I do is um, I look around and see what parents are having a rough time and I'll try and go and find their kids and go and kick a ball about with them or throw them in the pool or something. That's what I try to do. Um, the kids, especially ones their age, don't understand. The adults know. The kids want to just play. You, we can't spoil the week of the, that the kids are having because of something like that. And so we all started throwing balls at each other in the pool afterwards. And that just about done the job, I think. The TV news is here, and Haley has become quite a celebrity. Uh -huh, yeah. But like a Hollywood film star, she finds the media circus a bit of a drag. You're very pretty, Haley. You have made a lot of friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the kids just have a ball. It's just one big party for a week. You know, it's like, all the kids look forward to it every year. <laughs> she is so beautiful. Where'd you get those glasses? <laughs> Did Daddy buy you those glasses? No. Who's are they? You don't know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Stick around. Back in Britain, and summer is drawing to a close. It's time to focus on Haley's big day, starting school. The family are out shopping for a school uniform, but it's always a struggle to find clothes that will fit Haley's tiny frame. We got to get stuff for your school today, can we? Oh, that's not bad, Mark. That's not too bad, is it? I'm going to my legs. You're done to your knees. We can tuck it in though, can't we? Yeah, we can tuck it in. Yeah? Okay. Five to six year old stuff doesn't fit her. Which and they is... don't get like school stuff, doesn't go down to like, she needs like two to three, maybe three to four year old. So this is the problem we have. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. To prepare Haley for questions or teasing at school, Mark and Kerry have started to explain progeria to her. She knows she has progeria. Um, she doesn't know exactly what it is. I mean, she doesn't. Mm. I don't think she knows what's going to happen. But we've always been open with her. If she asks questions, then we answer it as honestly and, you know, as much as we know, we'll tell her about it. She's only four, so you've got to be a bit careful, and tactful, and put it in like child's language. But she always says, when she gets older and she's going to lose her progeria, she can grow hair. Or when she gets older and loses her progeria, she can be tall like a big sister. <laughs> oh, Dave, dear me, now you're going to look like a moon, moon man with them on, aren't you? Yeah. Hey? That's the same thing, isn't it? They're still too wide. Yeah, it's still too wide. Thank you, do up a bit tight. As with many rare diseases, scientific advances with progeria have been slow. But the recent genome project, mapping every gene in the human body, offers some hope. We have cloned the progeria gene already. It's in the human genome database somewhere. We have to find a way of pulling out that progeria gene from the mass of data. It's a lot like hunting a serial killer. You know the killer is out there, but you don't know what he looks like. With only 40 known cases, progeria has not been a high priority for medical research. But today, with people living longer than ever, research into the aging process might benefit children like Haley. You're not going to
Sometimes I feel annoyed that they should be looking into it more, but at the end of the day, they're not going to go and throw millions and millions of pounds or dollars at something that's affecting just a handful of people when they've got millions of people dying of AIDS and stuff like that. It makes me a little bit angry that maybe they should be doing it, but I can understand why. Yeah, gorgeous fit. Gorgeous, they are gorgeous. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. It's the morning of Haley's first day at school. Three months have passed since the open day. But physically, Haley has aged by the equivalent of two years. Do you want to do your lunchbox first? Yeah. yeah. Chocolate spread sandwich. Packet crisps. Pink panther biscuits. Punch fingers. There you go. All right. It's yeah. Heavy. Heavy. Got it. It's heavy. Oh. Really smile. <laughs> Hayley, what sort of things do you think you're going to do on your first day? Writing? Yeah. What do you want to learn how to write? Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs? Cats and dogs. I was excited this morning. When she started putting her uniform on, that's when she sort of think, well, we're really going to school now, big school. So. Got put her to bed early last night and she shouts down, Mummy, I can't sleep. <laughs> Didn't you? There you go, go then. then. Now she's made school, that's a big milestone. Um, now we'll look forward to, like, um, is she going to finish school? Will she ever go to secondary school? Um, will she be one of the unlucky ones that doesn't live very long? This is the start of a new chapter in the family's life. For Haley, it's a rite of passage. For Mark and Kerry, it's a leap of faith. From now on, they'll be entrusting part of Haley's life to someone else. See you later. I'll pick you up later, all right? <laughs>